Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cookie Tree Tribe. And we are over here with an unlikely romance story playing out and I'm really, I'm not sure. I think that Cinnamon might be kind of warming up to Princel, but I can't be entirely sure. I mean, he's been so busy admiring his reflection and hardly doing anything in the stream for so long. How can she trust that he's changed his spots, so to speak, and is willing to put in the hard work and the ethics that the Cookie Tribe are known for, instead of being so self-absorbed and self-obsessed the way that a rosewater is. Well, I don't know how this is going to play out. This is interesting. This is almost like I wish there was a natural attraction quota for our nichelings, or I had a random generator already prepared that would say what my nichelings find to be the most attractive thing, because I can't really tell if Cinnamon thinks that, that Princel is all that. They don't have very good immunity. Like, she's not really that impressed with, with how he's behaved so far, but he has come over to help her out with plucking berries off of the small trees. Oh, and if you guys are confused, what the heck is going on, Siri? Then you know the drill by now, I hope. And actually, if you're confused, you don't know the drill, so I'll tell you. Please check the video description for our playlist so that you can watch the previous episodes to follow along. We have so many little soap operas and stories and dramas happening across the entire island. It would be very difficult to explain. It would take me the entire episode to just explain what's going on. So do please check out the previous episode or at least take a peek at the Google document, which will have a link to all of the nifty rules to explain how we play the Cookie Tribe, as well as our wonderful wiki, which continues to be a source of wonder and fascination and pride for me. Thank you so much to everybody who maintains that. It's entirely fan maintained at this point because I'm just too busy, but hopefully sometime during this year, I will be able to actually work on getting the, the wiki up and going. So it's even more of a great resource for those of you who love the stories of our tribes and the stories of so many of our other series. So now that that has been said, Cinnamon, I just don't know. Maybe I should roll like the Whim's random genetics thing and see if he has any of the traits that she finds attractive. That would actually be kind of a fun way to see things. But for now, we'll see if he's going to continue, I mean, so far so good, at helping her clear like all these berries so that she's free to finally clear up some of this grass. And she'll keep an eye on him and see how she feels in a little bit here. But now that we're done with that, we have actually done all of the, the things that all of the nichelings can do for the day. And we have three new babies about to be born to add in to the cookie, the rose, and the confetti tree. So all of the main breeding females of those trees are ready to go. And they're all going to have... Yep. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. We have quite the variation here. Let me go ahead and increase the number of nichelings on my little counter. I do have a little piece of paper, so we're making sure not to go over a baker's dozen. I'm keeping an eye on it, but no sneezing. Huzzah. They're healthy babies. Healthy, happy babies. That is fantastic. Also, bottle, bottle alert. Gravy, get it. He's such a good helper with making sure that the bundles don't affect the small bushes of the land. But let's begin with Lala's child. Oh, Sira. Oh, she has a little digging paw. Oh, I kind of want to name her Ginger now. But gosh, okay, hang on. I need a name for another, let's see, uh, Spice list. So we're going to come up with another Spice list because I want to name her Ginger, but she actually doesn't have uh like any brown on her so list of herbs and spice names let's find something good because i feel like lala for this being one of her first reborn children uh chai clove i mean maybe you do ground up cloves hmm ginger peach ginger root i mean we could name her like a whole nickname like ginger root Hmm, but she doesn't really look like a ginger root, but she can dig is the thing. Lemon extract? <laughs> this is not as helpful as I was hoping it would be. Majorum? That's kind of a mouthful. You know what? I think we're gonna go with my my initial thought and we're actually gonna name her ginger root. Uh, or how about uh, ginger, uh, ging, ginge? Maybe just ginge. I kind of like, well, ginge. 
we're gonna go with ginger she's ginger even though she is not the ginger color she loves to dig around the roots and tend to the roots of the tree and will actually be taught the importance of doing so so i think that's really exciting she also has nimble fingers so we might actually think about her as the heiress in the future and maybe start veering towards more digging paw nichelings and even start experimenting with some snouts that are a bit different than the ones we have been working with uh, to start expanding the uh, genetics available to our tribe into the cookie line. But there we go, our first little baby Ginger over with Lala over at the cookie tree. Then the other child is another male. Dun dun dun! Another white spotted white male. That has just knocked Lordon down from, and actually this is quite amazing if you think about it, it has knocked him from his pedestal as being the consort of the queen uh, and has resulted not only in a male, and she wants Rose the third, that she is determined to see the matriarch line unbroken, but a white on white spotted male. I really feel like that has shaken Lord Han. Here he felt that he was going to have the perfect child, the wonderful princess. He was going to be the father of the new queen. And while his son is healthy, his son is an all-white nicheling. What could this mean? And we're actually going to go ahead and name this little guy. Um, I kind of want to name him Kale again. Uh, in fact, we're going to go ahead and name him Kale the second, even though that has nothing to do with anything. Uh, but I guess it'll just be kind of like... I, I think Lord Anne will be so upset at the birth of this child and Rose so disinterested that he would just name him Kale the second out of out of almost a bitterness of like this is as good as if we had Kale and it should be like something more dramatic it should be something more cookie related uh, so poor little Kale the second has been born but I also feel like this is a big twist on the fact that Lord Anne has always been very bossy bullying and judgmental prejudiced towards Earl T and towards Snow, the other white spotted nichelings, and he was actually very aggressive towards Cloud when Cloud was born. So maybe this is a sign that we need to have a more gentle, kinder personality, and maybe even these white on white spots should be something that the tribe admires rather than sees as washed out in weekly males. So we'll have to see. Uh, I think Lord On, though, would be more upset about it than anything. And that means it's finally James's time to shine. So James has been quite patient, waiting for the queen to decide if Lord Anne will be her consort for life or not. And uh, now that it's clear that he has failed her, James is going to give it his best shot. So we're gonna send him over he is not as strong as Lord Dawn, but he has actually proven his strength over the years and he has antlers. So I think we're gonna go ahead and give him, he has oh, like gray antlers. Let's try to pass on maybe white horns. What does he have? White and black horns. She's got black. So anything they pass on would just end up being gray anyway. Uh, so we won't bother with horns. Hmm. I think that James would possibly pass on He's been kind of feisty, huh? Maybe, maybe moss brown fur? Because the, the spots, if we could get white fur with rose colored spots to really make the rose spots stand out, that is what would be most attractive to this tribe. But he's, he's less concerned with attraction and more concerned with kind of having a bit of strength and power. And we have to, to get antlers again, we actually have to spend time in cold climate. Hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and give him Claw, because I feel like he's concerned about power in a different way. But I'm also going to give him, let's go with red pattern? Hmm, red pattern, brown pattern, beige pattern. Uh, let's go ahead and if we're having so many white on white nichelings, should I give him red patterning just to be sure? He already might pass on red patterning. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Maybe something different just to, oh, here, let's change the fur color then. Cause I think he, I think that he has spent so much time, we're gonna go with moss brown fur. So even if that doesn't end up with the kind of nicheling that is the most ideal, it might end up with something different. And if his son is sickly, or if he has a son actually, he will be rejected again. 
But it's finally his turn. He can finally come over. Little Cloud will gather up uh, this stuff and uh, the nuts. And Lordan, in his fury, I think, will be sent across the river. And James will be invited over, where the queen shall settle down on her nest and try again for Rose the Second. Uh, there we go. All right, so they're all settled in. And then we have another baby, actually. So let's zip over to the confetti tribe and check them out. Oh, look at little Nata. Oh my gosh, I'm going to leave his name Nata, but I'm going to add an extra T. We have little Nata. Hi, buddy. You look just like your Uncle Chip. And you look just like a, like another one that Shazak would be so proud of. All right, Cram Bear, by the way, would be a great potential for the future of the Rosewaters, but he doesn't match up with the Queen. Does he match up with, nope, not match up with Raisin either. But Cram Bear looks amazing. So maybe he'll have some really fun children in the future too, because I love him. He really, he really represents kind of what I think the confetti's like, or what the Rosewaters would really want. Uh, so we'll have to see, maybe he'll match up with the future queen. Hmm, all right, but let's see. We're gonna have, we have our Wanderer Van Keer popping by, um, and we named Nata. So let's take care of the cranberries really quick, or the confettis really quickly. There's a lot of trees, there's a lot of bushes that need tended to, so I feel like that would be what Chip is working on. And Paprika wants to do more fighting, so she's trying to hunt anything that moves. And Cyan's getting a little older, so I'm gonna have Kokoria pop over to see her mate. Uh, there we go, I, I wasted some moves there by accident. But she's gonna pop over to see her mate. Shazak is gonna get a little comfy. There we go. And Kokoria, there. She has to nest under the tree, so we can't have another child today. But Cranbear is actually good at plucking uh, berries, so he's gonna go to help out his uncle and uh, gather up the berries with her them. And then over here, I think that Vankir has found some fish. Yep, sure enough. So Pinel's gonna come and gather them with this weirdo that has come in. They'd be kind of nice to him, because I just feel like Vankir is sort of like... Uh, when our nichelings first started on this island, he was kind of like the threat that mother nichelings would tell their children about to stay close to the cookie tree from. But now they know he was nothing to be afraid of, and he, but he's just kind of like simple. He just keeps to himself. He's a little bit perplexing to everybody involved. Uh, and Von Roro is getting older. What does he really like to do? He really likes berries. So he's gonna follow his nose and kind of go after any berries and zip past these others. And Mamisi is gonna come over, aha, and she found some berries for her father. So they're gonna, they're gonna kinda invade this territory on the edges. And then over here, Kakiro, whoa, there's so much food. Kakiro just found an abundance of food, so he's gonna be distracted, which is good, because I don't really like this wanderer very much. I feel like he is a little sneaky and not good. Like, he almost might have the traits that would turn him into a rogue male. Uh, but we're gonna leave him there, because, oh, we're, we're being attacked. We're being attacked. Get the bundles, Bonabri. <laughs> because over here, Salt has cleared away the last of the grasses around, like, well, almost. He's almost finished clearing away the last of the grasses in like a two tile radius around this little berry bush and is gonna have to make his decision soon. Will he leave the cookie tribe and join Rico? Will they fall in love and have children of their own outside of the cookie tribe's lineage? And will he have to leave the safety of Mies? Or will he decide to turn back and to stay with the tribe? Uh, we'll have to see. I think it'll depend on if Kikiro gets over there soon or not. Oh, yeah, we're being attacked! Bundles, get them! There we go. And meanwhile, Apricot, Messy, and Coffee are kind of free-for-all nichelings. A and G immunity. Nope, doesn't match with the queen. They're kind of free-for-all uh, cookie nichelings right now who are, who are beginning to explore the edges of their territory and chase after bundles and just try to tend to the bushes they find. But they do have a duty to clear away all of the grass on the island, so it's good to see that we're making progress there. And then over here, Lala, with little Ginger being born. I feel like Lala, that brings us up to 12. We can have one more cookie here. Almond's that old, Gravy's this old, Nutella's that old. Hmm. Hmm. Ah! Bottle. 
There we go. Good job, Cinnamon. I feel like Lala is content with her child for now because there's a lot of grass in the way. There's a lot of growing to do. Uh, there's a lot that needs... Oh, another bottle! Get it, raise it! There we go. But she's really wanting to, like, focus on tending to the tribe. She's not, she, she is the goddess of fertility and believes in having many children after all. Uh, but there is clearly a lot to tend to right now. So she's going to have Tamarind help her. And they're going to tend to the small trees and the big trees. And clear away the grass that has come up to threaten the, the tree again. And kind of reassess uh, after that. Especially, the other nichelings are still pretty young. But... Eventually, Lala is interested in seeing them have children and maybe send those children out into the world. Uh, so Nutella offered to take care of the berry bush. He's not very good at collecting from it. Well, he's equally as good as almonds, so they're kind of tending to things here. He is making eyes at her. Uh, she's more keeping an eye on how Gravy has really proven himself. He joined the tribe and has just been helping out so much. And then over here... Speaking of proving himself, Princel is beginning to even fight back the grasses to try to help Cinnamon out with defending this area. Oh, and then over here, Grammy. <gasps> Grammy has been injured! Dun dun dun! All right, I think now that there's so much kerfuffles going on with who shall be the father of the next queen, Snow is actually gonna jump down and run away from the area. Uh, just temporarily abandon his post to see what has happened to Grammy and will he be able to help her? She has been injured by this tree. This abomination against, uh, like, he'd, he'd rail against the coconuts, I think. This abomination against the safe nuts from Mises' tree. How could it hurt her? Uh, so I think he'd be very upset about this, actually. Grammy, can you move? Oh, she's still hurt. Oh, I think that, yeah, okay, I definitely think that Snow would be very upset about this and trying his best to help her and, and as a result, as a result, declare his love. Hmm, it didn't work. What about now? Nope. Nope. Oh, no! <laughs> he declared his love, but maybe she's, like, almost dying in his arms. Oh, my gosh. And he's trying to, like, save her. The drama is happening down there. That's hilarious. And over here... A boy! But he is pink spotted. There may be a potential for James to be father of the next child, after all, uh, of the queen. And he's actually healthy against all odds. Holy cow. We still need the next queen born, though. So that's still a little bit of tension for the Rosewater line. Uh, and what do we have over here? Mamisi is still just kind of wandering around. She is a good fisher. We may have her actually help us just unlock some genes, is what we might do with her. Because fishing... Yeah, we need... Well, we need to fish just a little bit more, and then we'll be able to unlock a new gene. And anything happening over here? Okay, good here. Somehow, Kikiro is the one who has escaped being bonked by nuts. Phew! Uh, but let's see. Yeah, there's... Uh, I want to jump over and get the mole. There we go. Yeah, there's quite a bit going on, and we may actually have a chance for James uh, to become the father of the next queen of the Rosewater tribe. So we're getting up there on the roses, actually. That makes ten roses. I could see the queen banishing some of the uh, white-spotted nichelings, if need be, to make room. She's not exactly the most gentle thing in the world, but things are going well. So, okay, story is moving slowly. I will try to pick it up a little bit faster next time, because I know we need to get a move on. Just, I love these characters so much. And we will see where things will head. We are cl getting closer and closer to finishing clearing this island and when we move on you guys know how fast the story goes at first when we hit a new land because we'll have less nichelings and this is also a good object lesson into why i cap myself out on the number of nichelings we have in our other tribes so if you guys would like to continue to join us for our stories do please consider subscribing to become a member of our nicheling pantheon and if you could please leave a like so that we can hopefully revive poor grammy who has been struck down by this coconut and maybe dying in snow arms or so he thinks and i shall see you guys next time bye bye